Sorry to disturb your lunch break, doctors. I just won't take a minute. Oh, say, some sure smells good. Sign here, 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 and here. Cause of death unknown. No marks, no lesions. He stumbled around a bit, knocked over a few lamps. Other than that, the guy's clean as a whistle. It's all in the report. Have a nice day. Signs of cardiac arrest. Looks like oxygen deprivation to me. But there are no signs of strangulation, so they must have used something soft, like a pillow. <laughs> Susan? Now, this is interesting, Susan. Take this down. Traces of sulfur dioxide and it appears formaldehyde. Now, we know he had a history of breathing disorders. Hmm. Waxy buildup. Nothing unusual. Uh, Susan. Now, from the position the victim is lying in, I would say that he might have been trying to get to the phone. Yes, he knew his number was up and he was trying to get help. And I would say, yes, that he must have known his killer, otherwise there would have been more evidence of a struggle. Excuse me, doctor. Excuse me, doctor. <laughs> Evidence of lacrimal gland secretion. Mm -hmm. This suggests that he, well, he was in some sort of an emotional state before his murder. Maybe our assailant was his estranged wife, a long lost cousin. Or his mother. Yes, just as I thought. Traces of hydrogen sulfide. We know he worked at the Rayon textile plant at Wayville. He was poisoned! In a manner of speaking, he was. Hydrogen sulfide is a byproduct of dozens of industries. Pulp mills, municipal sewers, coal-fired power stations, and Rayon textile factories. It's been known to trigger asthma problems and can be toxic in levels as low as one part per million. You think he died from an asthma attack as a result of toxic poisoning? I'm suggesting it was a contributing factor. He was asthmatic and subject to toxic environmental air pollution. He had a history of skin complaints and respiratory problems. You have to take these things into consideration. 
What we have here is clearly a case of environmental hypersensitivity leading to this man's demise. What are you talking about? We all live and work within a cocktail of airborne poisons. Synthetic carpets can emit traces of formaldehyde gas for years. Talcum powder contains asbestos. There's benzene and steel soap pads, phenols and skin cream. Well, these are present in insignificant amounts. It is irresponsible to blow these things out of proportion. I'm afraid our Dr. Hope is missing the point again, Susan. The amounts appear to be small, but over a number of years and in combination with other things, we don't know what can result. Did you know, for instance, that every time we fill up our cars with gas, hydrocarbons escape into the air, adding up to billions of liters of gas each year? Or look at a typical house. Paint remover, furniture wax, clothes back from the dry cleaner, all emit gases that accumulate in homes made airtight to conserve energy. They can transform your house into a toxic cesspool. And we go to work each day breathing in car exhaust. Diesel fumes, pesticide soaked dust from farmers fields, second hand cigarette smoke, these things affect people in different ways. My Uncle Larry gets sick in airplanes just from the recycled air. I can't read a fresh newspaper without sneezing because of the ammonia in the ink. These are all contributing factors to our long-term health and, I maintain, probably a factor in the death of our Mr. Tree Bridge here. Wait a minute. What the...? Ah, peanut. Well, gentlemen, we have our culprit. Eating peanuts while laughing! It's like dancing with the devil! Some people like to walk the nice edge. Good work, gentlemen! Donuts are on me!